when we start talking about disability and violence, um, we're really moving to more of a public health model. So uh, health consequences of actions of violence can include death, of course, injury, mental illness, chronic disease, and overburdened health systems. A little bit about people with disabilities in the disability community. Um, the first myth, um, and this is from um, actually NOVA, which is the National Organization um, for Victims Assistance, the, this information comes from. The first myth being perception that people with disabilities are suffering. Um, rather than extending legal rights and protections, um, I'm sure most of you know of the Americans with Disabilities Act, which was passed in 1990 and actually just recently amended this month by Congress and, and President signing off on it. Um, uh, discrimination against people with disabilities is pretty rampant. Um, what happened with uh, Title VII and the Civil Rights Act in the 60s is they covered things like religion and race and national origin. Um, people with disabilities, of course, weren't covered until 1990. Um, so um, anyway, the societal response um, prior to the passage of the ADA was typically to extend charity to people with disabilities. Um, being kind to a person with a disability is not an accept an acceptable substitution for giving them equal rights and protection under the law. Um, the second myth with people about people with disabilities, I mean that's what PWD is. I, <laughs> I hope you you got that. Um, um, and we'll talk a little bit about person first language later, um, but because it's kind of such of a, a mouthful to say um, or read anyway, we uh, we write it as PWD. Um, the second myth. Um, People with disabilities lack the ability to make choices or determine for themselves what is best for them in all spheres of life. Um, those spheres may be physical issues, mental, emotional, political, sexual, um, financial certainly. Um, because a lot of people with significant disabilities receive uh, uh, support from the government um, based on SSI or SSDI benefits. Um, so a lot of times you get into conservatorship and financial um, payeeship issues um, and the denial of those rights to people with disabilities. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. The third myth, society fears contact with crime victims generally, generally, <laughs> as though their distresses are contagious. So that stigma is even stronger when it comes to dealing with people with disabilities who are crime victims. Um, Nova says deviations from social norms such as he hearing, seeing, walking, mobility, thinking um, tend to frighten those in the able-bodied majority uh, who define the concept of normal abilities. Uh, when two forces of stigma are joined, victimization and disability attitudinal barriers um, to providing healing and justice can really seem formidable. So um, I like what they, they had to say about that. A little bit specifically about, um, statistically anyway, about the population of people with disabilities in our nation. About 40, 54 million Americans um, have uh, come with a wide array uh, array of physical, cognitive, and emotional disabilities. Um, about, that's about 20% of our population experiencing some sort of disability. Um, of course, there is one protected class which we all can join at any time, protected classes being those, those listed under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, such as national origin and race. Anybody can join the disability community at any time. And in fact, um, as our population ages, of course, baby boomers are now getting to the age where um, they're retiring and drawing on Social Security benefits. Um, disability definitely affects us at a growing rate. Um, and then more specifically about people with uh, mobility issues or physical issues, um, the last bullet you see there, about 9 million individuals with disabilities use some form of personal assistance. 
That can be paid, informal, formal. Um, Kansas has a lot of Medicaid programs, home and community-based services that pay for in-home care. Um, it is a national push to get people out of nursing facilities and into homes, out of institutional settings, um, and provide services in the homes. So we're seeing more and more of that, which is good, um, definitely, for a person with a disability. Um, but I think a as we go along, you'll see that there are some issues arising around um, care in the home. Um, did I just take your part, Jason? I'm sorry. Fortunately, he's tolerant of me. Um, a little, well, do you want to take this piece since I've kind of, okay. Okay. Violence and people with disabilities. Um, so specifically, people with disabilities and the violence that occurs. You'll see the first one there. Um, victims of domestic violence um, tend to be, uh, uh, the perpetrators tend to be loved ones. Again, kind of talking about the new caretaker role for people that are, are in the community that used to be in, in nursing facilities and other institutions. Um, uh, people with disabilities are four to ten times higher, higher risk of becoming crime victims. And it's estimated that about 50% of patients who are long-term residents of hospitals and specialized rehab centers um, are there due to a crime-related injury. So not only are people with disabilities the recipients of violent actions, they can become a person with a disability, anyone can, by, as a result of violence. So there's kind of two ways to look at that. Forms of, of abuse that are kind of unique to people with disabilities would be withholding medication or assistive devices, um, taking money, I mentioned that a little bit earlier with conservatorship and payeeship, um, isolating people. people. People with disabilities tend to be isolated anyway because of transportation issues. Um, um, a lot of them are not necessarily out in the workforce, though many are. Um, so isolation can be um, um, uh, really doubly affect the person with a disability. Um, forcing sexual acts, that's, that's really, some of these things of course go across the board to people without disabilities as well. Um, failing to provide proper care is a form of punishment or coercion. Hurting pets, destroying property, using the disability against them. Uh, being restricted to a wheelchair or a bed, uh, being denied meals or setting up strict meal times, um, being denied access to medical care, purposely being dropped. Of course, most of these end ones are uh, really relating to mobility impairments and spinal cord injuries, people that are really significantly um, physically impaired. Um, not being turned in the bed um, and being left in soiled garments for long periods of time. Um, so those, those are things that are, are pretty unique to people with disabilities. Um, and if you can imagine how much a person with disabilities may depend upon others for some of the very basic things that we take for granted, um, such as taking a shower or having lunch, um, you can see where there's a lot of room for um, abuse to occur.